Robert Cletus Driscoll was born March 3, 1937, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Shortly after his birth, the family relocated to Des Moines, Iowa. His father sold insulation until he developed health problems from asbestos exposure. Then the family moved to California. That same year, he was cast in his first role. It was a bit part, but it got the attention of film executives. Bobby was cast in The Fighting Sullivans in 1944. For the next decade, Bobby was a star. In 1946, Song of the South was a huge hit for Disney. Driscoll was Uncle Walt's darling. He made his new uncle a lot of money. In 1949, Bobby was cast in the lead role in The Window. He played a boy who witnessed a murder, but because of his frequent lies, no one believed him. In 1950, that role won him an Academy Juvenile Award. He played Jim Hawkins in Disney's Treasure Island. He was offered parts on television shows and specials. In 1953, Bob last big role. He plays the voice of Peter Pan, but despite the success of the film, Walt Disney is not pleased with his performance. Wealthy eccentric Howard Hughes was annoyed by child actors, but he was particularly outspoken about his disdain for Bobby. For reasons only Disney knows, Bobby's contract was abruptly terminated that same year. Bobby's last film credit was in 1958. He starred in The Party Crashers. He continued to find work on television but the parts came fewer and farther between. In 1960, Bobby turned to substances more to cope. After that, most of his public appearances were in the news for a different reason. The actor who was the apple of Uncle Walt's eye had drifted to New York. He hoped that if he could get on Broadway, it would breathe life into his dwindling career. He didn't find the success he dreamed of on stage. But he did find a home at Andy Warhol's The Factory. In 1969, Isabella reached out to Disney for help. Her son was missing. After some checking around, Driscoll was located. In March 1968, two boys playing in an abandoned building found a dead body surrounded by religious pamphlets. With no money and no ID, the man who was once the darling of Disney died alone at age 31. He was buried as John Doe in a potter's field. He had 35 acting credits in 31 short years. He left behind three children. <laughs>